um, it's a skill if you are not aware of it. It's not just, you know, let's go for a Saturday seminar. Uh, let's see what she's saying. And uh, I mean, done, done. No, actually, you're learning a skill. Um, uh, you're learning a skill. And this skill is very important. Okay. So if you don't know me, I'm sure you know. But if you don't know me, my name is Sahar, and I'm the chair of biological human and life sciences here at ASDRP. Uh, okay. So um, definition of research writing, documenting and reporting and communication. We're going to talk about the importance of effective research writing, documenting, reporting and communication. And I go through an objective of the seminar. So as you know, Saturday seminar will be a kind of um, a module um, that uh, going to be on Canvas and you're going to have some assignment and submission. So surprise, surprise, I'm not going to cover all the topic um, that I'm going to talk. So whatever has underlined the red color font, it's the one that I'm covering. Anything that has a bold blue font is the one that you are going to do research and find it yourself. OK, so first of all, let's talk about definition of research writing. Okay, so the research writing, basically it's a process of inquiry. It involves gathering and analyzing information, data on a specific topic or a subject, okay? You need to have a systematic approach or basically we call it methodology to answer a specific question or a problem that you are investigating, okay? You need to go through various resources and methods. So you need to test algorithms. You need to uh, read a lot of other papers and gather all this information into your writing. Research writing can have many form, can be academic, can be, uh, can be an academic paper that you can find it on like PubMed or Google Scholars. It can be an articles. It can be a report of your research, your master thesis or your PhD dissertation. Okay, types of research writing. Okay, so there are different kind of research writing. And when I say it's in skill, when someone says that, can you make a case study and report it? You need to know what kind of research involves in case study and how you need to write it. So I bullet point the kind of the type of research writing that uh, you need to know. And basically you need to gain that skin and uh, skill and knowledge of how you can address and write for any of these research types. So first one is empirical. Basically, you are collecting and analyzing data. Uh, it can be theoretical research. That means you are going after a black hole and exploring the existing theory. So you are going to write a theoretical research um, paper. Uh, sometimes you need to do review articles. Review articles means that you're going to go through 20 to 30 research articles related to the topic, summarize, sometimes get data from them, come up with a new strategy and write a review articles. Case study. In case study, you're looking for a specific subject that you're going to go in depth to look at that. For example, um, a person who had exposure to COVID-19 and they've been suffering from uh, lung cancer. Uh, so like maybe they're in the research center that you work in, there's only one patient like that. So that case becomes a specific case study and you need to review every result and test and um, exams in details and make a writing about it. Literature review. Okay, so let's see what is a literature review. It's provide an over, overview and critical analysis of existing literature. What's the difference between literature review and review article? 
Okay, so in review articles, as it says that you get the article, you review that, like you get two, three papers, sometimes 10, 20 papers, even get the methodologies from them, get the data, redo it. But literature review, you are just going to read, you're not going to get any data from, you're not going to duplicate, you're going to write, you know, get 10, 25, I don't know, whatever literature papers, the more the better, but you are going to go through that and then just write the overall um, overview. What's the use of it? Yes. Um, science is evolving. Um, scientists, they don't have time to go through literally every papers. So if I want to see all the research that been um, evolved around, you know, um, kids suffering from ADHD from last 20 years, Instead of going to look at all the papers, I might need to look for the last 10 years or 20 years, three literature reviews. That will give me quickly an overview of whatever happened and what has been critics over time. What are the feedbacks? What are the limitations? So it's very important. So we have two kinds of uh, research, quantitative and qualitative. Um, the qualitative one, you are focusing on non-numerical data and basically you're writing a research paper about it. But on the opposite side, as the quantity says, the quantitative means that you're going to collect numeric data. Uh, so literature, the qualitative are uh, subjective studies, the quantitative are objectives. Okay, uh, so. What did I cover in the first topic? I covered the definition of research writing. I covered the types of research writing. Now, write it down, take a screenshot. You go into work on the basic components of research paper. I'm sure all of you have read tons and tons of paper, hopefully by now, and you can easily, like literally easily, type it in the chat before even you start. So. I give you a few minutes, um, just in the bullet, not descriptive, um, type the basic components of research paper. Okay, who's going to write first? How many people are on board? Who's going first? Okay, um, put it on, um, not directly to me, but for everyone. Abstract, okay, I, I will read it. Okay, good, good. Some of you are going for, majority of you are writing for quantitative. What about literature review? What are the components for that? Yes, good, good. Yes, good. So abstract, title, abstract, intro, method, results, discussion, reference. What else is missing? Figures, yes, precisely. Figures and tables, good. Three words in a, after abstract. Hi, Hi. How about keywords? Appendix. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing case study and you're publishing it in the paper, in the journal, yeah. appendix, good. Yeah. But keywords, how about the keywords? Yeah, where are the keywords? Yeah, there, there may be four or five. Title, abstract, intro, method, result, discussion, reference, mm -hmm. table, appendix, keywords, mm -hmm. authors. Good, what else? Acknowledgement. Yes, acknowledgement, very important part. You have to acknowledge all the people and organization who support you for the paper. Is there anything missing? There's a long report, maybe summary, conclusion, recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it is long. Future direction, yes. Future recommendation, yeah. I give one more minute. 
if there is current work. I mean, current work, it's not a very kind of, maybe that's, I'll go to the next one, it's for report. It's not a part of a research paper, um, but current work will be part of a reporting. Uh, we talk about it. So that's it. Um, data, discussion about the data. Sometimes some papers, they want that you talk about the data. How about the hypothesis setting? Hypothesis will go under, I don't think so. That's a specific subtitle. Um, that goes mostly in the intro that you talk about hypothesis, but I don't think so. That's a specific subtitle. Um, okay, I think we cover all, right? So uh, let's go back to, we talk about research writing. Uh, we reviewed the basic components. Let's talk about documenting. I'm not giving a definition of documenting. Uh, that's something that we work maybe as a, you know, work together here, uh, the importance of it. But I'm going to talk about the type of documentation. Um, so research proposal. The first thing that you start with um, when you want to start a research is proposal. The research proposal is something that, as Bharat mentioned, has hypothesis in that. You're proposing an idea. You have a hypothesis section that talks about what are you going to do? What is your plan? What is your assumptions? Okay. After you start proposing, you will start your study. And as your study progressing, you need to have a research report. That means you constantly report based on your observation, data collection, literature reviews, um, analysis that you have done. So that goes to reports. After that, that you've done your study, you will publish a research. So apply for, um, and so you write a manuscript. So a research paper is the next step. If you are a master's student, um, that will be involved, you'll be involved to submit a project or thesis to finish your master's. Um, and that is considered as, um, um, like I would say, either a total description of what you have planned, which is maybe a summarization of three, four paper that you have published. But that's kind of, um, you know, like a baby chapter, I would say as a chapter of a book thesis. While on the other hand, your dissertation is what you do for your PhD. And that's, if you want to like resonate, that basically will be a book. Um, all the research paper, literature reviews, literature uh, survey, everything that you have done associated with your uh, you know, um, PhD program. Um, so the other type of documentation is the conference paper. Conference papers are not as descriptive as normal paper. Um, they, uh, they want basically the body of the, um, it depends on again, what kind of conferences you go. Some conferences, they just want an abstract. Some of them, no, they want like intro, methodology, result, but in just like, you know, a uh, few words, um, maybe 1,500 characters. Uh, posters, it's another way of documentation. You guys are all presenting at Expo, so you know what the posters is and literature review. So I'm going to go back to um, this slide. Uh, can some of you write in the chat um, the tools and software we are using for documenting research? Tools and techniques to document research. Come on. 
document research. Jupyter notebook is for coding, uh, but yeah, I mean, that basically kind of um, document, it's not documenting research, is basically your workspace, you know, you're coding in Jupyter notebook. Uh, interviews, I'm talking about tools and softwares. Your lab notebook, okay, that's a tool. Very good for documenting. Come on, you, you guys are using very well electronics. Um, yes. Everyone is doing it, doing it these days, documenting your work and research. Come on, who will be the first one? Get a prize for it. You share it with everyone in your network, your teachers. Oh, you're a little bit advanced, overly. Yes, that's for writing a paper. Google Docs, there you go, yes. The first one, yes, Google Docs. Everyone these days are using Google Docs to write the documentation, the abstract, whatever you're doing. So Google Docs, perfect. Books or articles, um, that basically your lab notebook. So Google Doc, lab notebook, what else? What are the software? GitHub. GitHub for documenting research. Um, I would say Jupyter Notebook and GitHub for code, but yes, it's a way of documenting, documenting your work, I would say, research work. Microsoft Word, yes, just like Google Doc, perfect. What else? Slack channel, yeah, good. External drive for storing your, you know, papers and spreadsheets. Yes, we use. How do you keep your papers? Put in the Google Drive. Have anyone used the software called Paper? Binder, yes, good. So that's the tool. Have, have any one of you ever used software called Paper? Okay, so the software Paper, you can have, instead of saving all your, um, you know, papers in different folder from different research, you can have it all in one place. Um, mm -hmm that you can have all your papers, you can subgroup them based on the author, based on, you know, uh, so basically make your own library of um, papers. And also whatever paper you have published or you are writing reviews. So instead of, uh, you know, and sometimes instead of just clicking open 100 PDF and go through that, it gives you overview of all the papers that you have, you're searching for. So if you have never used paper, uh, try it. I have more tools, but I will let you do your own research. Okay. How many of you, let me pause the screen. How many of you ever heard of this software? I love it. Notion. Okay, paper and Notion are the takeaway secret sauce of this research seminars. Notion and paper. I'm not gonna give more secret sauce to you guys. That's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, let's, you guys discover the rest. Um, okay, so for kind of work that you guys are need to do, uh, you need to write about definition of documenting, importance of documenting research, and basically writing more about tools and software for documenting. Types of documentation, I think we talk about this. Now, reporting. So report is the one that you provide to your principal investigator uh, or a lab staff that reviews your work, okay? So everyone knows what is report means. That means you did some work and now you're talking about it. What you have done? Was that a methodology? Did you develop an algorithm? Did you write a code? 
did you do the data collection? Did you run some experimental in the lab and notice some observation? Um, did you uh, collect some samples? So why this important? Because your research is nothing but gathering all these reports. It's important that the report will be reported in the 24 hours from your observation, I mean, less than 24 hours from your observation, or, I mean, if you wrote a quote, maybe you remember it after three days, what you've done. But if you're in the lab and you got some number, maybe within an hour you want to report it. So it's very important that whatever observation, whatever, whatever kind of research study you are doing, you keep on reporting um, your research. I'm going to talk about types of reports. So there's technical research report. That means you're doing some technical works and you are writing a report about it, okay? Uh, maybe uh, you're working with some, I don't know, uh, HPLC. Uh, you're working on technique to develop um, a different method for HPLC. So that's technical. Sometimes you write a policy um, and you provide a research about that. Like my students need to write uh, to institutional review board at um, ASDRP uh, regarding the HIPAA compliance of their study so that they can collect human data. So that's kind of a policy report, okay? Uh, sometimes you need to report from the market perspective, um, which basically is not something that we do, but out in the business, they do market research and they have to report um, every, uh, you know, everything that they observe in that report. Uh, quantitative research report, you know that that means you are basically reporting some numbers, some numerical. Uh, qualitative, you're talking um, about subjective of the work and you are presenting that report. Uh, sometimes the report needs to be just descriptive, like um, basically your observation can be descriptive uh, of how you did the cell culturing step by step. You just talk about the process that you have done. So that's a descriptive research uh, report. And uh, sometimes my students need to research, to go back and talk about you know, the problem that they face out and uh, have an email communication with the author of a paper and come back to me. So basically they're describing um, how they have did the outreach, what that person said, what are the things that they need to work on. So basically in a descriptive way they are reporting. Uh, and experimental. So experimental reports, very, um, majority of you are familiar if you're working in the wet lab, uh, you have a lab journal, you're running an experiment and you keep on reporting that. So, um, content of research report, let's put it in the chat. What are the content a research report has? Research report contents. Go ahead. Abstract, no, no direct message, thank you. Uh, yes. Cover page, yes, sir. That's very important. Uh, the person who will review, review your work, they need to have a cover page. Now, what's the important cover page is that, okay, hi, this is Sahar. I am um, the principal investigator in my lab. Um, I am working on, uh, you know, 12 neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience computational projects. Um, you know, this is a kind of work that we do. And um, this is related to one of our studies associated with uh, COVID-19. So a person who is going to review the report based on the cover page, they get some glimpse of what I'm doing. Uh, table of content, yes, yes, absolutely. Problem statement, yep. References, very good. Result, yes. Acknowledgement, yes. What else? Conclusion, yes. Come on, there was something on uh, you guys mentioned that I said it is for the report. You use it in the report. Background, yes. Someone mentioned it in the um, 
as a component of the research paper, which I said that this is not a part of research paper, but it's a part of a research report. Current work, yes, there you go. Yes, significance of study, current work, and um, opposite to current work, what is it? When you report current work and future work, yes. So when you report, you will report the current progress that has been happened so far. And you're going to talk about what is gonna happen next, your future work. Perfect. Yes, everyone is getting expert in this one. Uh, so let's talk about communication, okay? Everyone knows what is com communication is. Um, the importance of effective communication in research, um, types of communication research, I'm going to give B and C as a discussion, uh, but I'm going to first discuss about tips for effective communication research. 